If ever there's been a car that's tested my patience and resolve, it's this one. And that is easily more than any car I've ever had. It feels this is almost like Trigger's broom. I don't think there's much of the original car left. And just when you get towards the end, or what you think is the end, it throws more spanners in the works. And whilst I was enjoying a quick blast out, it broke again. And if you missed the last video, we sorted out the steering because that was all over the place. But today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. And if you missed that video and want to see what happened, check out the banner in the top corner and go and have a look. It's making some funny noises with some funny faults. But I have a lot of you guys to thank because you said it's probably the map sensor and that can be accessed behind the driver's light. It makes sense. The map sensor is a part of that boost pipe apparently and it definitely sounds like the boost pipes come off. Being totally honest with you now, I have absolutely no idea what I'm looking for. I probably should have Googled it. Well, as you lot very well know, I am no expert, but I cannot see a single boost pipe back there. Air conditioning pipes, and it looks like pipes for the washer jets at the front. Other than that, I can't see any. So I'm gonna have to put it on the ramp. This is gonna be virtually impossible for you guys to see, but back there, I can't see anything obvious. And the easiest way to get down the back of the engine to the top of the turbo is by removing that scuttle panel. I've done this a few times now, to be honest, so I'm fairly handy. Off with the wipers first, they just have a nut each. After that, there's like little metal push-on clips that hold the plastic part of the scuttle to the metal part underneath, which you'll see in a minute. Remove the rubber seal and the top part of that scuttle comes off fairly easily. Two torque screws either side of this now is all that secures it in place, apart from these weird little bracket type things that it slots into. Disconnect the symposa hose and it should all just pull out. Now after all of that, I bet you lot were screaming at the TV or your phone going, no Ben, no, no. Boost pipe, just down there, have a look. And that pipe right there is the one in question. And there is the map sensor just down there. Now I'm fairly confident that I don't think it's the actual map sensor that's broken because it looks to me this hose just there has been rubbing on this chassis leg. That in turn I think has caused a boost leak which has in turn given the map sensor faulty readings which has in turn then thrown everything else off and obviously given me no boost. It does look a bit awkward to try and get to but I'm gonna give it a go and see if I can get that piece of pipe off. I trolled through many a website and forum to try and find out what's going on with this car and the random faults that all seem to be linked. If I had all of the car knowledge to help you guys at home, I'd put it all on one amazing website using Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace really is the number one platform to help you run your business. And they've made it super easy for anybody to build their own website. You do not have to be fully certified like me. There are thousands of different from website templates for you to choose from and once you've found the one that suits your idea the best you can add and edit text as well as any images or logos and make it as unique to you and your business as you want and if that isn't enough one of the best features by far is the ability to create your own email campaigns grow and engage your audience by creating powerful email content that matches your website existing products blog posts and logo keeping your messaging clear and consistent. And because a massive percentage of us browse websites on a mobile device, you can see what it'll look like on there too. So what are you waiting for? Go and create your amazing website today by checking out the link in the description box below and use code EVILGT for your 10% off. Now this time I did Google how to get this plenum off as there's a few bolts you can't see and rather than messing around, I got a good idea from a YouTube video. There's six bolts in total if I remember rightly and two of them are really fiddly to get to. Moving a couple of pipes out of the way on the left hand side of the plenum helps gain access to these. You only have to crack them off with a ratchet and they'll all unscrew the rest of the way by hand. It was fairly straightforward after that. Loosening off a few of these Jubilee clips holding these pipes in position, a bit of wiggling later and she was free. Here is what I think is the problem. You can already see where two places it started to wear through. That one isn't as bad, but this one, I mean you imagine this is under a lot of pressure as well, so any kind of boost leak, which is probably coming through this hole, is pretty bad. This is quite embarrassing. But I'm going to share it with you anyway, because that's what we do on Evil GT. You may remember in a previous video that I say, always go for the simplest solution. And by that I mean, if there's an issue with, say, the boost on this car, which there was, check all the pipes first, rather than going, it's got to be the map sensor, let's go and have a look around that sort of vicinity to see what's what. So as you've just seen in the video, that meant intake plenum off, pipe off underneath here, a route around underneath here, all that messing about. Instead of just going, which I know a lot of you guys Guys would have done. Let's just check what I can see easily first. Ignore the coolant, that's been fixed. Instead of checking 
what I can easily see, I went straight to the driver's side and started taking all these bits and pieces off instead of just looking around, oh I can see all of this, oh there's a pipe here that comes from the turbo, let's just follow this pipe here to the intercooler that's not attached. And this is why I'm not a mechanic. Not my proudest moment, but we live and learn, don't we? The only saving grace is that I've took this off, you could say for no reason, but that does look pretty deep. And I've even put the torch inside and had a good look around here and there's definitely no light coming through them holes. So the pipe that I thought it was is actually fine, but I think I'm gonna try and repair them little divots first. Unless I can find a second hand one that hasn't already rubbed through, because this is pretty common. That is flexible black, adhesive, rubberized, so that should do the trick and make it, well, a damn side better than it was. Because these pipes, brand new, are over 150 quid. Now there is a little bit of something that I have done right. In addition to the boost fault that we had yesterday, we also had an ABS and traction control fault and you could feel the ABS. Then it started to, I couldn't get into fifth or sixth. It was like it was going past the gate into reverse. So fifth and sixth were really difficult to get. And when I Googled this problem, it was the most random, bizarre chain of things that were all related to one thing that I've ever heard of. But a very long-winded story short, this is what's the issue, particularly that bit. You can see that's already had a repair once. The cables in the center are completely different color. But it's worn through again, so I'm here to replace the whole thing. This is definitely a first for me. I've never done electrics of any kind before. But this process you're about to see is genuinely what they would do in a Ford main dealer. And that is get a new cable, chop the connector off the top, connect it to the existing loom, make it slightly longer so that it stops it from stretching in the future that's rather than replacing the whole thing for a purpose made one we can see why this wears through pretty quick in that there's quite a lot of tension the car's on full lot left but there's quite a lot of tension on this even though I've given it a little bit extra but if it's in the brackets that are provided by Ford as you can see just there and then one just there there's not really that much room and I can't bend this bracket that way to give it a little bit more over to the left because then it puts extra strain on the brake pipe. So what I think I'm going to try and do is get this little bracket off here that looks, well, really rusted and see if I can put it on the other side of this bracket. So at least then if that holder is this side, we can run that straight down into the ABS sensor here, which should give it a bit more play. That's my plan anyway. Looking at how rusted this is, I thought I'd just given myself yet another headache, but after a good clean up and a bit of WD-40, it wasn't that bad, and my plan actually worked. New ABS sensor loom on and secure. Now I need to put the rest of this car back together. Not the prettiest, but it's saved over 150 pounds. And that flexible glue has filled the divots in, made sure it won't burst through. Time to reverse the process now and put everything back together. I made a tiny bit of room for that pipe down at the bottom just to relieve a bit of pressure off the chassis leg. It's still not the best though. There's not much room down there at all. Once I built those pipes up from the bottom of the intercooler, it was on with the plenum. Even though I had a good idea as to where the bolt holes were, this was still pretty fiddly. Once that was all bolted up and all the Jubilee clips tightened, it was time to put the ECU box back into position. It was in with the driver's side headlight and make a start replacing that skull panel. Well, that's the result. Not a single bolt left over. Gotta be a first start on Evil GT. <laughs> I'm joking. A few of you guys mentioned in the comments to take out fuse 26 for about 30 seconds and see if that resets any of the lights. I've done that, so let's give it a go. So we got rid of the engine management light, which is good, and the traction control light's good, but then the ABS light is still there. So I'm gonna take it for a drive, see if we can get rid of that. I thought I'd sorted this ABS out. I don't know if that's picking up on the mic, but you can hear and feel the ABS grabbing. The ABS light's gone off. Oh no, <laughs> it's just come back on with the traction control light and the noise now has stopped. So I have no idea what this issue is, I really don't. Both ABS sensors are brand new. The near side loom looks really new, no damage. I've just replaced the loom that side, so there's no damage on that either. 
I would like to think that it's not my repair because it had the same fault before I tried to repair the loom, so I don't know what it is. My power's back at least, that's good news. I think I've fixed that bit. If any of you guys in the comments can help and explain exactly what's going on, have you guys had any experience with aftermarket ABS sensors on these and found that the fault is exactly the same? Another weird fault, which a few of you have have mentioned even though I've not actually said that there was an ABS fault or anything in the previous video. Fifth and sixth seem to be really weird, like the gate for reverse has disappeared. Do you know what I mean? So when you go for fifth, you go a little bit too far because that gate for reverse isn't there anymore. So you go as if you're going into reverse too far over. How is that related to the ABS sensor? I, I, this car has got some of the weirdest faults ever. Not only that, I've fixed the boost and I've got my boost pressure gauge back but then the oil temperature gauge still doesn't work. That surely can't be related to the ABS sensor as well, can it? I mean, surely not. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. One thing is for definite, I've got boost back. <laughs> Pulls so good, this car. And it sounds mint with it. I hope the mic's picking up them dump valve noises because it sounds so good at old school. Little burbles on the overrun. <laughs> Just been out and about for 10, 15 minutes or so. Good drive out. We're getting boost now. We're registering boost. So you can see the boost is there, but we've still got no engine oil temperature and that will definitely be up to temperature now. So I've still got the ABS and traction and I've still got no engine oil temperature, but I do have boost. At least this thing goes like the clappers again. Forget some of what I've just said. I've been into the unit, dropped some bits off, got back to the car, started it back up and now I've got oil temperature. I think it's playing games with me. In fact, don't forget what I've just said. I've moved again. The ABS light went off, come back on. But when it come back on, my oil temperature gauge has just dropped down to zero. How on earth is the ABS light got anything to do with the oil temperature gauge? You guys know at home, I'm no mechanic, but I am genuinely flummoxed. I don't understand how an ABS fault sensor, whatever it may be, has anything to do with the oil temperature gauge. Literally, the light on the ABS came on with the traction control light, and then the engine oil temperature dropped to zero. What's going on? The only saving grace is I've got my power back. God, this is quick, this car. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a like, hit the bell, and I shall catch you on the next video. Ta-da.